Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever in the world you might be. You are watching Surfline Live at Pipeline. Welcome. Uh, we're excited to have you here. We're excited to be here. I am uh, Surfline Director of Forecasting, Kevin Wallace. I am here with a very fresh-faced John Warren. Uh, some say he looks like a young Leonardo DiCaprio, and I would agree with that. Uh, he's, he's looking great. He's excited to be here, too. He's our primary Hawaii forecaster. Um, we are testing out a few things at Pipe. We've got some new broadcast toys, uh, so please bear with us. We've obviously got pumping waves as well as the set pours through here. Uh, so we're playing around, having some fun. Um, plan is just to run down what's going on with this swell, um, give an outlook for the rest of the season, and then celebrate some highlights from earlier in this winter. We're not going to do play-by-play. -play. Frankly, you wouldn't want to hear us do play-by-play -play because we'll probably screw it up. Uh, John and I are just going to talk some forecast stuff. We'll occasionally gawk at some waves here. Uh, probably see it, hear a lot of oohs and ahs. Um, we also have Mark Beatty in our remote studio, who is going to keep in it, or is going to be bringing us replays and highlights, uh, keeping us on our toes too, cueing us in to when when the waves are good and and uh, uh, filling things in for us. So uh, we'll get into it. So uh, Lena, I'm John. I mean, um, <laughs> how did this season hold up? Um, you know, to the outlook. I, I know there was there was obviously a lot of anticipation uh, with a strong El Nino in place. Uh, you know, over the last six to ten months or so, um, what was your feeling on 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 how this season played out? And we're still kind of in it, obviously, with a, a pumping northwest swell at Pipeline today. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for that epic intro, uh, Kevin. It's great to be here. Um, yeah, so. It, season you know it's 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 been kind of a strange one uh you know with when people hear el nino they just automatically think it's just going to be crazy pumping swells all season long um that really hasn't been the case uh i mean at least not for good swells uh and not really for pipeline um you know pipe uh it, it was this year it seemed to be better in the early season like around december and into january then it was kind of hit or miss through most of january through february um, and uh, now that we're here in March, uh, towards you know, the, towards the end of the, of the season, kind of moving to a shoulder season now, uh, but we're we're seeing a good spell now, and uh, we have some more that are starting to line up uh, for uh, the next several days. So maybe a last uh, you know a last hurrah uh, late season sprint here. Um, but yeah, it's you know when, when people think of El Nino, they think of crazy big swells. Well, that's not always you know a good thing for pipeline, um, especially when we're talking about this break since we're here at it right now. Um, <clears throat> you know, it, it's uh, it, it's it, the thought of the eddy starts coming to mind when you hear of El Nino. Um, you know, obviously an eddy swell is not a pipe swell; it's just too big. Um, but also during El Nino, you get a lot of variable conditions. Um, you know, winds just changing as the fronts move through. Uh, a lot of times, favorable winds don't really line up with at least the the proper pipe days that you would have as far as swell heights and swell direction and stuff goes. So it's definitely been hit or miss. Uh, it hasn't been a golden year like some previous years that we've had. Um, but it's it's I, I would say it's it's been. A little dry really for pipeline as a whole you know you can't really think of too many uh you know too many epic pipe days there, there's been some but it hasn't been just full of them um but hopefully uh again like i said towards the towards the back part of the season here we start to see it make up for lost time yeah i mean i think you were you were on the north shore for probably a couple of the better pipe swells this winter uh, when you were there for the event, uh, John was was uh, there for the Lexus Pipe Pro, which ran from late January through first what first ten or so days of February, I think, and and probably got two of the better days of the season at Pipe. You know, they really finished in in good waves, and then um, had the had the big day too, um, where it was a little like kind of funky, but um, but uh, all right. Like what was. Yeah, what was it? Yeah, that was the first time I think you've been back uh, to the islands in a little while. Um, how was it being there for the event, and and uh, any impressions, anything that that really stood out to you for in terms of surfers or uh, competition, anything like that? It's definitely great to be back in the islands. It's a uh, it's second home to me, um, so it's definitely had my feet back in the sand, and and you know just just to be on the beach watching pipeline in person again was awesome. Um, yeah, they, they, they definitely lucked out with, with, with a couple of really good swells within the event window. 
they had to definitely pick the eyes out of it, go the full length of the event window to get those best days. But I think they ran on the better days that were on offer. Um, you know, there was a lot of mix going on during that event window uh, of, of a northwest swell mixed with some north. And you don't want to see that at pipeline. It's just uh, any kind of combo swell just messes things up, um, doesn't give you that proper shape uh, for at least pipeline. But it, it did bode pretty well for backdoor to be open for business. Um, so that there was a lot of backdoor action we, during that event. Yeah, as we, uh, we briefly swung over to our backdoor cam there too. Um, yeah, sorry to interrupt, but uh, I thought that was a, yeah. a nice segue. You're going in the back door, and, and Beatty's on it, looking at the back door camp. Yeah, and we'll we'll uh, we'll we'll definitely talk about you know what it takes for pipe and back door to work uh, later on in this broadcast. But it's um, yeah, it was just it was just great to be back out there and 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 to see the world's best surfers, the men and the women, just charging it. Um, you know, they had like maxing pipe days to just super fun, like what, what you would, what you would quote unquote call fun for pipeline and back door, um, definitely fun size for those guys. And, and so they had a little bit of everything, some really good wins, um, on s- some of those days, nice and glassy. So it was definitely a spectacle and, and just to see it in person, it's definitely different than, you know, watching it from the broadcast from wherever you're, or you are around the world. It's definitely a different feeling to actually be there on the sand and watching that stuff go down live. Yeah, sometimes I wonder if, um, if, the, if, if and when the judges get, um, get swayed a little bit by being there on the beach and the excitement around it. Like, it's hard not to. I, I 100% do. Um, you know, like yeah. if, if you're there in person and everyone's erupting on the beach, like, um, it's, it's like, oh man, that was a tent, you know, and then you maybe watch a video of it and, and it, it, it maybe was, it's still really good, but maybe, you know, not as good as what you thought. Um, well, let's, uh, John, why don't you break down what we, what we've got going on here today? Uh, what type of conditions are we seeing? where did this swell come from? Uh, Mark's going to throw up the, the forecast video that you put together as well as, as we run through this. Yeah, so what we have right now going on is this west northwest. So here we're going to see this storm that moved off, the move off Japan uh, over a few days ago, pushing out its west northwest northwest swell around 300, 320 degrees. So really good direction for pipeline. Uh, so that's what we have on tap right now hitting. And now, as you can see here, two more big purple blobs that are spawning in the northwest Pacific. So we're going to have more swell coming uh, for the weekend and into next week. And then right here you have uh, east northeast trade winds. That's what we're going to see today. It's uh, as you saw in that last in that last image. Uh, it's a side to offshore flow, um, not perfect. You know, I, ideally you want like a lighter southeast wind, which is straight offshore. But uh, east northeast trades are the typical. It's the prevailing wind here in Hawaii on a daily basis uh, or usual basis. Um, so and and fortunately the north shore of Oahu, uh, most of it. Uh, faces to the northwest as opposed to a straight north. So east northeast trade winds are that side offshore flow, as you saw in that image. Uh, so still pretty clean, uh, keeping it nice and grooved on the face, at least as those uh, as those waves move in towards the beach. You know, you can see out the back, like uh, even here in this. You know, as you zoom in on the on our uh, camera, our pipeline camera, is occasionally you can see that that you know the the surface chop up a bit with white capping uh, east northeast trades further out to sea but right here close to shore at the pipeline reef it still stays nice and clean uh, as those winds are blowing that side offshore direction keeping it nice and groomed hopefully we continue to see that throughout the day and those trades don't get too strong it stays more easterly than northerly um, and we have a, a, a great day of of cleaner conditions throughout the entire day uh, as opposed to just the morning so yeah, that's what's that's what we have on tap right now is is a good size west northwest northwest swell. Uh, the direction is favorable for pipe around 300 320 degrees. The period's good, uh, 15 to 17 seconds uh, as this thing's peaking as it's peaking right now uh, and through the next several hours. Uh, so it's checking all the boxes for pipeline to be good. It's uh, the one the one factor is we're just hoping these trade winds don't get too strong. Hopefully they 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 stay at a moderate level i have i have a few questions for you now john uh th- that was a great right. breakdown number one so you mentioned uh the direction west northwest and northwest and you threw up a 300 to 320. um yeah. what does that mean exactly 
All right, so that that angle, that's the angle from, uh, you know, if, if straight north is 360 or zero degrees, you know, east is 90 degrees, straight south is 180, a straight west is 270 degrees. Uh, uh, you know, and, and the North Shore doesn't really see straight west swell energy, just one is blocked by Kauai, uh, and two, the storms are, you know, they don't really develop south of Japan, they kind of move off Japan and track across the North, across the North Pacific. So uh, it, you primarily see swells uh, from west, northwest, northwest direction, and then shifting north as that storm passes to the north of Hawaii. Um, so a 300 to 320 degrees is is in that it's in that west northwest direction like sh shifting to a northwest um if you're looking you know at how the how it's chopped up on a on a graph if you will um so yeah so 320 degrees is that west northwest direction and and that's that's what you want to see here bundling in at the reef a pipe for it to perform properly and that that direction when we we give directions on on forecast or you see it on reports you see it on um, our lola spot pages the direction is given um, in terms of where the swell is coming from so like you mentioned if it was coming from 270 degrees that's straight west um, if it's coming from you know roughly 315 degrees like this swell is that is coming from out of the northwest and moving towards the southeast uh, so that's what we're seeing here. The other thing you mentioned too was the was the swell period, 15 to 17 seconds. Give us a breakdown on swell period real quick and, and why it's important for pipeline. Yeah, so basically period is the energy uh, that's being transferred from the atmosphere into the ocean. Uh, the stronger the winds are for a longer period of time, it's transferring more energy from the atmosphere into the ocean column. Uh, so that's how you get that, that's how the energy is transferred. And, and the stronger that wind is, the more energy is piled into the ocean. Um, and, and it creates, you know, it, as more and it, the energy basically pushes deeper within the water column uh, and, and, and creates a longer period as, the, as that energy spaces out from, from other swell, from other sources of energy that are, that are moving into the ocean. And as it spaces from each other, uh, you get you get a separation from crest to crest or trough to trough, and that's where you measure period from. Uh, so from successive wave crests or troughs moving through a fixed point, uh, you basically count those seconds. So if you had a buoy and a swell, once swell rolls through that fixed point, then you start counting till the next swell moves through that point, and that's how you. So if it's 16 seconds apart, um, and th and then you would know you know, just how much energy is below the water column. It's just all math basically at that point. Um, yeah, so uh, the 15, 16, 17 second bands that we're seeing right now, uh, that's 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 the peak of this swell that's expected uh, for basically now through the next several hours. Um, this, this energy will be traveling faster than shorter period swells. But the longer period will always arrive sooner as it travels through the ocean uh, at a, faster speed than shorter period. But that's not always the case. It depends on, you know, how far away the storm is from, from your beach. If the storm's right on top of you, then getting all of it at the same time, the shorter period with longer period, uh, really the longer period doesn't have a chance to build up uh, in the ocean um, to, you know, before it, before it hits your beach. So you're pr primarily getting shorter period at that point. But when a storm's far, far enough away, thousands of miles away, um, allows more energy to transfer into the ocean, you get the longer period bands. Those travel faster; they arrive at your beach sooner. Um, so yeah, it's it's uh, that's what we have right now. Like what's peaking, what you're seeing right now in the water as you're watching this pipeline uh, waves roll in. Uh, you 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 got 15, 16 second, that 17 second bands out there right now. Um, you know, you you hardly ever get just one single band. It's not just you know, it's just 16 seconds only. Um, you know, because it just just the nature of a storm when it's developing, uh, you know, from when it's cranking, because storms usually gradually crank up and they have uh, a wind field over the ocean that ranges everywhere from 50 knots to 35 knots. So you're having uh, a lot of, you know, energy being pushed towards a coastline that are spawning from different strengths of the wind 
in the fetch. If uh, I hope I'm not losing everybody there, but you know, there's there's that closer to the center of the storm, you'll have your strongest winds. Uh, so longer period energy is being generated from that part of the fetch, and then further away from you know those those strong winds, the winds start becoming weaker, maybe down to 30, 35 knots, and you're still swell being generated from that. And it's shorter period as it's the winds are not as strong to transfer as much energy. So you get shorter period bands still coming towards your coastline. And then it's the track of the storm, how it's moving, you know, if it's moving, you know, towards you, away from you, uh, arcing across the ocean will depend on just when all those different bands are going to arrive at your coastline. But typically, uh, you know, the, the setup is that you, you see the longer period bands arrive first as they travel faster. Uh, so on the building side of a swell, you have long period energy start to fill in and then uh, it tops out. Well, here in the Pacific, you know, uh, it, we, we see a lot of swells typically top out like anywhere between 14 to 17 seconds, somewhere in that range, uh, depending on how strong the storm was, how far away it was. But uh, and then on the back side of it, as it starts to fade, then you'll see the period start to come down as that slower traveling, shorter period bands start to, you know, trail that start to start to filter in after it. So you got the, the building, the longer period building side of it, then the peaking, which is usually in the mid, usually of mid of mid period bands and then the fading side of it. And that's why you see in the period starts to decrease. So, yeah. <laughs> I hope I didn't lose too many people with that breakdown. It's a lot of no, a lot of information I just, to I, unpack. I just woke back up, so I'm, that was great. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, we're watching a, a bit of a set roll through here right now. Um, did see pretty good action this morning um, on on a couple of uh, the bigger sets. So, so we're going to run through uh, a couple of replays of some of the highlights that we saw early this morning. Um, you know, John, you you mentioned um, just the Kind of timing with long periods and and how uh, and here's one of uh one of the best waves of the morning how's that thing oh, still going double. out of frame yeah uh, but we saw this this swell start to build yesterday afternoon and and especially by yesterday evening it came up with very long period energy you know 18 to 19 seconds um which pipeline you know there are different spots around the world that well every spot around the world has some combination of swell direction and swell period, maybe mix of swells, wind, all these variables that need to come together uh, to create waves, you know, potentially like this, really good waves. And, um, you know, pipeline typically isn't great on the, you know, front end of really strong swells at a really long period, like, you know, 18 to 20 seconds or more. Um, it's big and it can be pretty and impressive looking, but it's it's really slabby and just kind of gnarly and, and hard to make anything. Um, and so you, you don't see a lot of good waves go down on the, on the, on the front end of, of these types of swells. It's like this, it's not even day two necessarily yet. It's, it's um, you know, we're really, we're, we're really only kind of, what, 18 hours into the swell, something like that. But when the swell period starts to come down like this, these are the ones that I really look for, for good conditions at pipe when that swell period, it's not short by any means, but it's just a little bit shorter, as you mentioned, into the 15 to 17 second range. I think there's um, there's a cool new tool on Surfline that I'll mention right now too. And um, we've got a, a what's new page um, that details some of these new tools that um, are coming out on Surfline. And, and in particular, uh, the swell spectrograph on Surfline we have that for both uh, forecasted swell spectra and then also observed swell spectra via buoy observations. And, and what that swell spectrograph does is it's, it's data visualization. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a way to look at um, a, like almost like a cross section of a particular swell. Uh, and you can kind of see where all the energy is concentrated. And in some cases like today, you've got almost all the energy concentrated in the longer period band, so between roughly 14 and 18 seconds. That's something you wanna see for a spot like Pipeline for most of the North Shore, um, where it's reef, it's very defined bottom, it likes a single medium to longer period swell to really have the cleanest and best conditions. And if you contrast that to um, like your average beach break that uh, maybe you know isn't as defined. It's got pretty flat sandbars and and likes 
either some sort of mixture of swells, so something out of like the south and the north, for example, um, or a mixture of shorter period and longer period, um, that swell spectrograph can really give you a nice visualization of, of, of that type of energy. And it's something I'd, I'd suggest anyone checks out. You know, if you're looking, um, if you want to look at the buoy swell spectra, you can do that from any buoy page. You can go to Explore tab on our app, um, click on that buoys tab, and, and then uh, basically just scroll down kind of towards the, the bottom of that buoy page to see the buoy swell spectra. And again, that's actually observed data. Um, with that spectra information. And, and then from, if you want to look at it for forecasted swell spectra, meaning some, you know, it could be tomorrow, later this afternoon, um, seven days out, whatever it happens to be, um, you can look at that information as well. You just make sure you go to any report and CAM page, um, click, you know, scroll down, make sure the swell graph uh, is selected and you go down kind of towards the, the bottom of the page and you can see that, that, that um, a forecast as well spectrum. So new tool on Surfline, and um, uh, it's, I find it really helpful when looking at swells like this. Um, okay, we actually have a question coming in for, from um, a member of our audience. Uh, thank you for the question and welcome. Um, John, this one's for you. You are our primary Hawaii forecaster. You've done um, hundreds, if not well, probably thousands and thousands of Hawaii forecasts in your nearly 20 year career at Surfline. Um, so we've got a softball one here for you, at least to start. Once a swell hits buoy one, uh, buoy 51, either 51001 or 51101, which are located about 270 miles to the northwest of uh, the Hawaiian Islands, how long does it take to get to the North Shore? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great, that's a great question. People uh, ask that one a lot. Um, I would like to ask Mark Beatty if he can cue up the video. Uh, you can see right there in the bottom left. Uh, so buoy one, uh, there's two of them actually, actually sitting out there that are side by side, uh, about 270 nautical miles out to the west, northwest, around 306 degrees uh, straight from the North Shore. Uh, and, and the period at hand right now with 15, 17 seconds, that's about 10 to 12 hours before a swell from that direction, from that west, northwest, reaches the North Shore. See here when it's a straight north. Uh, when it hits that buoy, it's a shorter distance. Um, you can see with that red line there, it's only about 160 nautical miles uh, straight, you know, from that uh, straight north swell hitting the North Shore as it's hitting that buoy. Gives you a lead time of 15, you know, about of, of a swell of 15, 17 seconds of about five and a half to six and a half hours. So considerably a big difference between, uh, you know, the arrival of a North swell versus a West swell. The more West in it, it takes longer to arrive uh, as it hits that buoy. Um, the more north in it, it arrives sooner from when it's registering on that buoy before it hits your coast. And obviously period plays a role too. And in this uh, one right here, you can see with the Northeast swell, it's basically hitting the uh, the Hawaiian Islands and buoy one at the same time. But luckily we have another buoy out there, uh, 51000 uh, sitting Northeast Hawaii. That gives us a little bit of a heads up on any swells coming from that Northeast direction. Um, but yeah, period plays a big role too. You know, it's not just direction, uh, you know, so, uh, the rules of thumb there is the more westerly the swell is, uh, the, the longer, the more travel time will take from hitting that buoy before it reaches the Hawaiian Islands, uh, but also with period. So uh, the longer period, like I said earlier, will will travel faster, so it arrives sooner. Shorter period uh, will take a little bit longer to get in. Um, <clears throat> so the you know if you have a shorter period westerly swell hitting that it takes a lot more time for it to get in than versus a more northerly swell of longer period um so it's basically you know there's a lot of math that's that's uh that's in play there you know we we just we crunch those numbers here and we we factor it out to uh you know help give you that accurate forecast of uh when when that swell starts hitting that buoy before you can you know expect that peak you know we can pretty much dial it down to the hour uh, you know, and when, when we're expecting a swell to top out and hold and then before it starts fading and you can see little spikes in there too on the buoys uh, with the actual surge of energy and we can kind of know uh, about what time to expect just a flurry of sets uh, to show on the North Shore or any coast really. Um, but yeah, the buoys, do we, buoys are huge. It's, uh, you know, you can't go wrong. It's real data. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's hopefully, they don't, you know, that they're working, uh, cause a lot of times the buoys are not working and, and you're kind of 
flying blind there, just going with model data only. But when you have those buoys sitting out there, you know, it's it's your first real, oh, besides satellite information, we do get satellite information um, that comes in, but it, the buoys are buoys are clutch, you know, and and uh, and having a network of them can really help you dial in a forecast. Yeah, I think you know, the the O one buoys off Hawaii is such a tremendously important forecast tool for us, and buoys aren't necessarily um, forecast tools across the world. Most of the time, buoys are very close to shore, so it's they're more of a validation tool than a, a forecast tool, um, meaning. The vast majority of buoys are so close to the coast that when by the time the swell is hitting that buoy, it's hitting the beach as well. So again, great for validation for um, you know validating that that swell is 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 coming in and arriving. Um, but uh, in some cases, whether you know offshore of Hawaii, there's a couple buoys offshore of California, um, the 59 buoy, uh, California buoy, and then the the 06 buoy, which is the south southeast Papa buoy. Um, which was, they're, they're great forecast tools. Um, roughly half day for Hawaii in case of the 01 buoys. Um, over in California, if you're based out of California, the 59 buoy, about a half day for Northern California, uh, about a day for Southern California, and then that, that 06 buoy um, is even a little bit more than that. Roughly, you know, kind of a day or so for Northern California, a day and a half to two days uh, for Southern California. Again, all dependent on the exact swell direction and swell period as, as you went through. Um, just want to uh, throw it back uh, uh, to the, the beginning of the season here. And, and John, you spoke at the top of this broadcast about the season we have seen as a whole. I, you know, I don't think either of us would call this a stellar pipeline season or really a stellar Hawaii season, but it's obviously it's had some moments of brilliance. Um, so we want to look back uh, to December 3rd, and Mark's going to queue up uh, Benji Brand's wave of the day from December 3rd, which was one of the, uh, the better pipe waves of the year. There we go. No, there we go. All right. Lost in there. Some okay, of the best ways one, ever. Pretty perfect, like eight to ten foot pipeline. The first section was so, so big and wide, and I don't think I've ever really like seen a view like that, like where it was just so bony and like clean and round and heavy. I was kind of tripping, I was inside that thing. And as soon as I pulled into the first part, I just got like this crazy burst of speed. I don't think I ever went that fast in a way. Luckily the way it was smooth, because I had, I had so much speed, I felt like if I hit a chop, I was just gonna go fly. I think I came out and I was, I was screaming, like vocally like screaming as I came out the barrel, like, ah! It's a really exhilarating feeling. So that was, that was a, you know, very clearly the day, the wave of the day on on the third, uh, or excuse me, on on December sixth. Um, no, that was the that was the one on the third. Sorry, um, yeah. but and probably the wave of the winter up until that point too, at, at pipe at least. Um, but just a couple days later, uh, Kanehi Hunt got barreled from what seemed like sunset to Waimea. Um, you know, on, on on probably what is the, the the best wave of the winter so far. It was um, you know pipe all the way to off the wall, uh, and maybe it's still still traveling. That actually we got a great looking set here too. We'll we'll move to Kanehi's wave uh, in a few. Mark, we'll in a second, but we'll we'll take a look at this set as it rolls through. One of the better sets we've seen in a bit. No takers on this one. Yeah. I I feel like some of the best ways I've seen so far in the morning, there hasn't been anybody dropping in. It's just been unridden. Uh, one, I guess, I guess one for the homies. Um, <clears throat> you know, uh, one thing to point out too uh, about about uh, the December third swell and the December sixth swell that we're going to touch on here. Um, you know, is is the, the December third one was uh, was a better direction for pipe. Um, it was northwest. Um, I believe it was like around 310, 330 degrees. Uh, so you primarily had pipeline left working on that one. Uh, whereas uh, Canadian Hunt's wave uh, on December 6th was more northerly direction. It was a, it was a solid north, northwest. Um, so it was a lot of backdoor off the wall 
ways coming in that day. Pipeline really wasn't even working. Um, so all, all the ways, all the best ways that let's just say that were being ridden that day uh, were right. Um, so we're going to see that here with uh, Kanae. Yeah. So what's, um, what, what, so what, what are your, what are the numbers that you look for, for like the really magic backdoor days, you know, for like swell, you know, rough swell size period direction, things like that. And then, um, the, the same for off the wall. So should I, so should I just give out those magic numbers? <laughs> um, we will, uh, I don't know, touch you on can that. Get the wrong ones. You can throw out a red hair. <laughs> See if anybody's paying um, attention. The magic east swell. I will. I will, I will give you all the breakdown on magic numbers for backdoor and pipe uh, once, once we get right back from this uh, this wave of the day by Kanea Hunt on uh, December 6th. Go ahead, Mark. North swell mixed with sand, so it was one of those rare days where like it was good waves and there wasn't a lot of like rip currents at the moment when I paddled out. It was like a lot of fun waves, not too many people yet. I paddled out first thing, I wasn't even out for five minutes and then I actually saw one of my good friends kind of looking at it, but he was like a little bit far out and I was in the better position. And then I just kind of, everything went blank and I whipped it. I just started paddling, I stood up, I looked down the line and I was like, okay. This thing has a really long line on it. Kind of adjust my line real quick and then give it like a good pump. And my feet are like way up on my board. And then once I got in the tube, I was like pretty deep in the beginning. And I just remember like I was getting so small and contorted and I was like breathing up and down with it, trying not to hit the foam wall, trying not to hit my head. And then I came out and I was almost like, yeah, I was just really baffled. You legend. It felt good to not fall finally. Usually you're that deep in the ground, you're just, it hurts. It felt good to just kind of come out and be like, oh. I was honestly more excited than all the boys were screaming at me. I was like, oh, all right. It's, it's a community over here, you know, it's cool. You know, one of the things I want to point out there in the very first uh, part of that video clip, uh, one of the guys on the beach says he could have still been in that thing. Um, <laughs> and lo and behold, he was. So it's like <laughs> even his friends on the beach kind of wrote him off. And, uh, you know, it's, those are some of the best barrels ever. You know, there's is, is ones that, you know, one you probably, like he probably wrote himself off even, you know, when he was in that thing, but just kept charging. Everybody on the beach kind of wrote him off and, and, uh, Sure enough, it's wave of the day, if not wave of the winter. Um, yeah. I mean, when it takes multiple surfline cam rewinds to capture the whole wave, like you know, it's pretty long and it's pretty special. Uh, it kind of, the, I feel like John John had one. I think one of the uh, either Pipe Masters or maybe the Pipe Pro a few years ago, where like the cameraman fully wrote them off and like pan back this way. It kind of reminds me of that, where. Um, yeah, it's like, like, oh, it's not, no, 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 no. And then just then, like, emerges somehow. Um, crazy way. Um, the other thing, um, and you, you probably notice this too when, you, when you're there for the pipe event, uh, as we've actually maybe had some riders, maybe not, um, was the emergence, and this is not new this year, but I would say over roughly the last maybe five years or so, uh, the emergence of the number of people in the lineups that are wearing helmets. Um, and it's, uh, I think it's really interesting. It's kind of like where skiing and snowboarding were probably 20 ish years ago, um, maybe a little bit longer than that, where you went from almost nobody having helmets, um, skiing, snowboarding to now almost everybody wearing one. And we're not quite Definitely. there yet at the lineup at pipe, but uh, at any given time, 
you know, maybe, and you can see kind of the, you can see all the white helmets in the lineup right now. They're easy to pick out. Kanehi has that like kind of cool, like almost like X-Men style red helmet. Um, that, that's pretty sweet. But at any given time, maybe half the lineup has helmets. I don't know if you noticed that when you were, when you were there for the pipe event. Definitely. Definitely. You know, it, it's, it's, you know, the, the same helmet thing has been kind of going on for a long time and, uh, skateboarding uh snowboarding you know it's it, it the, i guess the hurdle that people have to get over is uh oh you like you look dumb wearing a helmet uh, well you know what <laughs> you know if, if it saves your life who the heck cares what you look like right you know it, it's just if, if it doesn't in, if it doesn't impede you know your surfing or skating or whatever why not like wear one like you know because chances are you know you're, you're going to hit your head sometime or another especially you know as you're pushing your limits um you know at places like pipeline um you know i i i i, I i've hit my head plenty of times skateboarding i always wear one when i'm no I, I i would have never noticed that like you just you seem totally normal <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you know it, it concrete's not fun when you hit your head on it you know so <laughs> and, and a reef is it's just just as unforgiving so and 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 when you're when you're putting your hands also uh you know or putting your life in the hands of mother nature you know you don't know what that way is going to do it, it, it could be do, doing something completely different than what you thought it was going to be and you're going to eat crap like no no matter what you do it could be someone that's in the way and you're trying to get out of the way of them or or you know it's just you just didn't quite read it right and and you could pay with your life you know you go straight to the bottom you hit your head on the reef a, a jagged coral reef you know like why not put a helmet on? You know, it, it's it's uh, it's it's a smart thing to do. Um, I'm glad to see helmets also come through uh, the years, getting better uh, as far as you know, like yeah. their look, but also just the way they're protecting your head. Um, you know, and and that's not a hindrance to your surfing. Oh, like, oh geez, oh, I was a, sorry. I was an that incredible. Was like, do we count that as a make? Like, like I, would yeah, you count that, that as a make? So Jeez. Um, <laughs> I mean, I would, I would, I would give it to him. I mean, awesome. I would, yeah. Like if that's, that's the wave of my life. If I just got that big. So yeah, heck yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll count that as a big, we're going to get a little replay here. Uh, helmet and all the bright, yep. Red board, Shh, double section. Oh, so, yeah. Just clipped so him at the end. You know, it's, it's, uh, and, and then, then there's the, then there's like, you know, it brings up, the whole, uh, do you get false sense of security? Um, you know, having a helmet on. Yeah. yeah, well, sure. You know, sure you feel safer. So you push your level, you know, it's actually probably pretty good for the sport. Uh, it, it, if he, if he makes, you know, the world's best that are wearing these helmets, if, if it pushes them harder, like, Hey, I can feel like I could do anything with, with my helmet on. Well, yeah, we're going to be seeing the progression of, of this sport go even higher, you know, as, as people try harder things go deeper bigger waves you know like it, it's it's not a false sense of security it, it's just security it's you know it, it, it the fact of the matter is it is a helmet it's going to protect your head to a degree um but you know I, I don't know it's like i feel like people will be not pushing themselves as hard if they're not having a helmet on because they're afraid of hitting their head <laughs> so put a helmet yeah. on you're not afraid you charge it and you know you see Awesome things come of that. Yeah, it was it was interesting. Probably the one of the things that stood out to me with with helmet wearing this this particular winter was Kai Lenny uh, was wearing a helmet during the backdoor. Sh I think it was during the backdoor shootout, um, and it was apparently the first time he, he's ever won worn a helmet um, out of pipe or maybe anywhere. Uh, and he ended up hitting his head on the reef, like smashed the helmet, was in the hospital with a concussion. Um, and so it was, yeah, it was really, really lucky that, uh, you were, you were able to, he was, he was wearing a helmet cause that probably saved his life. Um, and then, you know, the other thing too is, is, is you've got, um, I feel like the, the number of young kids, boys and girls out surfing pipe, you know, starting to get into pipe is just getting like there's more and more and younger and younger every year, you know, obviously there's, there's prodigies like, like John, John Florence, who, who started surfing at pipe, I don't know, at like six years old or something like that. But you see, um, he was the exception to the rule and, and, um, you know, really, uh, have we're seeing more and more about that more and more of that out there. 
Yeah, it's, uh, you know, that's just the growth of the sport. Uh, you know, it, it, there's a lot more, you know, the people through the years have been having kids that are surfing too, and, and it's just growing. Uh, you know, you're going to have kids charging it as they see their dads charging it and they want to charge it and get out there. So um, it's a good thing. You know, it, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's going to add to crowds in the lineup. Coastline's not getting any bigger. The spots are not really getting, you know, there's not more of them. But there are more people surfing, more people, uh, you know, having, you know, access to the water um, and s- s- safety equipment also helps them out, you know, w- wearing helmets or whatnot. You know, it's, it's if you rewind the tape, people didn't have helmets, people didn't even have a leash. So <laughs> you might paddle out somewhere, you lose your board and then you're done. But now people be in the water longer. And obviously we've seen other things, you know, like flotation come really become almost ever ever present over the last i don't know 10 10 to 15 years or so um you think back to 2010 or so and um basically you, you never really saw it and then a couple of the you know unfortunately losing um losing some pretty high profile surfers and big wave surf and or guys having super close calls like shane dorian and, and coming out of it and saying hey i really want to I want to figure out a way to make this safer um, and then group, you know, groups beyond that, like the, the big wave risk assessment group with Cole and Danilo. Um, there's a lot of cool things around safety and, and people looking out for each other um, in some of these, these really heavy lineups. You know, one of the um, most interesting things to me, I, I guess um, you hate to see anyone get hurt, but I, I always appreciate how willing different surfers, bodyboarders, people in the lineup are at pipe, um, how willing they are to, to help people out. Because, you know, nine times out of 10, it's someone that's already in the water, someone already, already in the lineup that gets to that injured person before, um, you know, even the North Shore lifeguards do it. Obviously, North Shore lifeguards are the best in the world and are super on it, um, but I think probably appreciate the help too and, and everyone looking out for each other. It's um, uh, again, like you, you hate to see anyone get hurt, but um, also appreciate the camaraderie and, and um, those people looking out for everyone in the lineup. It's it's cool to see. Yeah, I mean, it's much it's much needed. Like you're you're in water, so if you get knocked out or or you hit your head, you can just drown. So you, like you know, like you may not die from the injury itself, but you can die just from drowning because you're in water. You know, so it's 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 always smart to surf with at least one person out there instead of by yourself. Yeah. Um, you know. Well, just if you are, are just joining us, uh, welcome. We're happy to have you here. Uh, you are watching Surfline Live at Pipeline. Uh, we, we've got a few new broadcasting toys that uh, we are, are testing out and playing around with, so please bear with us. Uh, as we as we move through and try a couple of things here, um, we're not necessarily doing any sort of play by play. John and I are, are reacting here and there. Uh, I am Kevin Wallace. I'm the director of forecasting here at Surfline. Uh, we've got uh, John Warren here too, uh, one of our senior forecast managers, and he is um, our, our primary Hawaii forecaster too. And uh, that's a a good uh a good reminder to please like and subscribe to our youtube channel if you're watching this and and you enjoy this content it is something we want to do more frequently so uh please do like and subscribe we we really appreciate it um and we've got a special guest special guest joining us now uh we want to work welcome uh parker connor parker geez i cannot speak to say anything right now uh we're welcoming parker Coffin to the broadcast uh parker it looks like you are are fresh off a uh, a great weekend in ventura with the uh west coast board riders club is that correct yeah we had a great weekend there were some fun waves down at sea street and um anytime you get the california surf community together it's a great thing so a lot of good people enjoying surfing and a uh, fun weekend at the beach so it was a great time Nice, and and I know you 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 hop back and forth between California and Hawaii quite a bit. Uh, any plans to head over to, to Hawaii in the in the next little little while and, and maybe get one of these late season pipe swells? Oh my gosh, yeah, it's definitely been going through my mind a lot. I've I've been doing a lot of traveling this year and spent a lot of time in Hawaii, and then came home and I chased that swell to Fiji and um, 
I was kind of seeing all this happen, thinking that I should maybe take a breather and take a break. But, you know, there's always a good shot that I might book a last minute ticket in the next couple of days. Because, I mean, starting with today, this run looks incredible. And um, anytime you can kind of get it in a, a little bit of the later season, it um, helps with the crowd a little bit. But also just the conditions, as you can kind of see today, it's just clean and um, just pipeline. Any chance you ever get to surf pipeline, you kind of got to take it. So I might be on a flight here pretty soon. <laughs> Nice, nice. Well, so we definitely, we've got to ask you a little bit about that, that cloud break swell from, oh, we're going back to just about two weeks. I think it was March the 7th that that, that swell hit. Um, just tell us a little bit about your experience going down there. Have you surfed cloud break at that size before? And, and um, you know, why, why were you there? Like, how stoked were you? Like, what did you see and what was the experience like for that swell? Yeah, I mean, that swell was definitely really special to be a part of. Um, my brother and I have been going there to, to Tabarua for a long time. Um, my parents randomly won a trip there when we were really little kids. So um, it's kind of been a special place for our family for a really long time. And yeah, I think, um, I mean, the mindset of chasing that swell was just that my brother is no longer on the tour. And him and I, we just have really wanted to connect and get some good waves together. And um, I spent a lot of time in Hawaii this year staying at Benji Brand's house and surfing with him. So the three of us had kind of just talked a lot about getting a swell like this throughout our lives. And then it was just funny how it all worked out. And we saw the forecast and um, a lot of people, I think, were kind of expecting it to potentially be that in-between size. And when I say that, um, it just is because at cloud break, there's multiple ledges. And sometimes the in-between size will break out on a further ledge and it'll kind of create a whitewash cap, kind of how pipeline does with the second reef. And if the swell's big enough, then it just kind of continues to move out there and it just starts getting thicker and taller and on that outside ledge. is It's kind of a pretty rare occurrence, I'd say. Like, obviously, people all know what it's capable of, but it's not like pipeline where it happens a, a, a bunch. So um, we just thought that the opportunity to potentially get it was there and um, we were willing to just kind of go for it. And obviously, if it was that in-between size, there's no better place to cruise in the world than on Tavarua. So we were going into it with just kind of open minds. And as you can see, guys, so many people got incredible rides. And it was kind of just like a day of surfing that I'm really grateful to just be a part of. And like, I don't know, to see the waves that people got and like the energy that was in the lineup of just like adrenaline, excitement, like gratitude and the, the crew, that was Benji. The crew that we were surfing with, I think, was just like a, a special crew. Um, and then the waves were obviously doing this, so it was unreal. <laughs> yeah, so had you been there on one of the outer ledge swells before? Um, I had surfed out there. I'd say that I'd surfed out there, but it was kind of barely big enough and it was also pretty windy. Um, so it looked nothing like that, but I had sat out there and I had kind of like been out there, but um, ne never anything like that day for sure. And this is this is you right here, I believe. Yeah, that um, was... Um, that was my one, my one bigger one that I got a little bit further up to the point that I was super psyched on. And you were you were shooting for Snap Five too, is that correct? Yeah. So um, my brother Benji and I, we pulled the trigger and we went on the last minute strike in hopes of kind of building our parts for the Snap movie that'll be coming out uh, at some point in 2025. So Logan Dooling was a big part of uh, helping us get there and and kind of coordinating logistics of filmers and stuff. So we were all really happy with what we got and definitely looking forward to sharing it with you guys when the movie comes out. Oh, yeah, we can't wait to see it. I mean, that was um, an incredible day. We actually, uh, I worked with, with Cole Christensen and we just broke down like a comparison of 2024 versus 2018 versus the 2012 swell versus the 2011 swell and kind of how they all set up and how they all work and how they are all a little bit different um, but all, you know, really had their moments. So that'll actually, if that's not live on the site right now, it will be live on the site very soon. It was cool to get the feedback from from Cole on that swell, working with him a, a little bit ahead of time. Uh, one of the things we heard, you know, from a bunch of people is either I got the wave of my life or <laughs> I got the best cloud break wave of my life. Did, did you have that type of experience as well? It, it, it just seemed like everyone got the best waves of their lives on, on that swell. Yeah, I would say, I mean, 
anytime you're in a lineup where multiple people multiple people say that it's a special day but i agree like everybody i was kind of looking at in the lineup just had these giant grins on their face and like yeah saw the wave of their life or got the wave of their life or whatever and i would say that um my wave like it's one of the waves of my life i don't but it's just kind of for like more of a i guess like a personal triumph of i got really hurt last year in barbados and so for me it was kind of just like the act of getting myself ready to go paddle out on a big day and like push myself probably like the hardest i've ever pushed myself in the ocean after that um so kind of like the the pre-story to it all is i think what contributed to me feeling really special about that one wave in particular because it was big it was gnarly and um i was really scared (laughs) and i think everybody was nervous but i think um I was, I was really kind of paying attention to like my mental narrative and I was just, you know, I set myself up for all these little wins that I could kind of take. Um, even just like jumping off the boat and touching the water was like a win. And then all of a sudden like paddling out to the lineup was like a win. And then right when I got out to the lineup in the morning, like pretty much the biggest set that came in all day almost caught the whole lineup. And I remember I just had my 8 and I was just duck diving my 8 through the biggest wave that I'd ever paddled through. And like, came up from that and that was like a major triumph and I kind of was in the mindset of like oh man if I get one of these waves like I'll I'll just be so happy and um, I waited my turn and just was enjoying watching everybody kind of maneuver through the lineup and then yeah I got my my couple opportunities and yeah it was was such a special feeling such a special day to be a part of and to get one and have the memory of what the wave looked like for the rest of my life is is pretty special. That's amazing yeah I, I I love some of the footage of, of just that that boat ride from Tavi up to Cloudbreak. You know, I've had the opportunity to go several times now that, um, and feel like you do, uh, just so lucky and grateful every time I get to go to probably my favorite place in the world. And even at, you know, half the size you guys got that day, like that boat trip out like you just you've got butterflies and kind of chicken skin at the same time and you can you can see waves lining up and it's, if it's clean like all those things come together so I, um that's that's really cool to hear about just your preparation and and taking things in and in, in these in these smaller chunks to to really get out and be successful out there i, I, I like hearing that what it like from a safety standpoint were you you wearing flotation did you have you guys um, run and safety and partners, things like that. Any, any prep like that? Yeah. So it was really cool for my brother and I and Benji to, to kind of be around Billy and Nate Florence. We were all actually staying together on the Island. And, um, I wouldn't necessarily consider myself like a small wave surfer, but I wouldn't consider myself like a gnarly big wave surfer. So (laughs) to be around guys like Billy and Nate that are clearly big wave surfers and to be able to kind of ask questions and um, just see how they operate kind of leading into a day like that was really cool. And I felt like we had talked to them and I'd never worn a flotation before. So Billy gave me a rundown on um, kind of like how to use the vests and kind of what the strategy is when you get caught inside or whatever, how you can inflate and deflate and Jojo Roper was there, so Jojo was kind of helping us out. And Jojo, everybody kind of was like spending a little bit of time on the skis, but all of us were really just trying to surf. And when someone got pounded and needed a break, they would kind of jump on the ski. But um, yeah, it felt like it was a really good camaraderie between the crew, like everybody in the lineup. I think there was a lot of mutual respect um, and just kind of uh, politeness, which was super appreciated by everybody because it was so gnarly that. Uh, you really wanted to make sure you could position yourself according to where you were going to make the wave. And guys were conscious of not pushing each other too up to the point and um, just really taking turns and having like a, a good etiquette within the lineup. So, um, and then, yeah, guys were getting pounded and there was uh, Ben from Nemotu was like really helpful on the ski. I felt he, he did a number of rescues, Jojo, um, Chad Campbell, Ko. There was, there was a number of guys that were helping people out, and I definitely felt like without them, you would just feel so vulnerable out there on a day like that. So we were all appreciative, and the fact that everybody kind of came in um, relatively unscathed. You know, Billy had that one really bad wipeout, 
could have gotten super hurt and he did get hurt he strained his mcl pretty bad but considering what the waves were like and how hard guys were pushing and i felt like it was a great day to have everybody just be safe and and um get good rides but then ultimately be able to celebrate the fact that we were all going home in one piece yeah i feel like billy's he's such a warrior like cause i'm pretty sure that white patty tick was one of his first waves of the day and then got like <laughs> two or three crazy ones after that, after, you know, blowing out his knee. Um, that guy's just, uh, uh, he's a warrior. Yeah, and for me, like, kind of what you were saying about, like, the prep going into it, I found a lot of comfort um, kind of by just being able to ask Billy. And, like, that, even that day, like, I think, I mean, I was getting my board ready, and he could tell I was nervous, and he kind of just, like, put his arm around me and was like, dude, like, you got this. Like, you've been you've been here like you know what the deal is like you're more than capable you just need to kind of get out there and be in the moment and enjoy this and i think that's kind of really belly's mentality that i've i've picked up on is he works so hard and in, in between all these really special days that don't happen that often and when they actually happen he's just in a state of like joy because all the other hard work that he's been doing prior that stuff sucks, but when the waves are firing and you're paddling out with your boys, like that's the feeling that we all do it for. And um, yeah, he went out and he had that the gnarliest wipeout I've ever seen in my life, like in person for sure. Like I was just I was paddling back out and he just looked like a tiny little speck free falling on the biggest gnarliest wave I've ever seen. And the guy's such a mad dog, just put his knee through the rail of his board, went back to the boat, like pounded some water, got on a little bit bigger board and just went straight back out and just within the next 30 minutes had like two of the craziest waves of the day and all of us are just like, oh my God, this guy is built different, you know? <laughs> so to be around someone of that kind of, I guess just like tenacity and drive in that kind of environment was really eye-opening and seeing that all the prep and all the stuff that you do leading up to it really does pay off. Yeah, so just to, to shift gears a little bit, John and I earlier were talking about uh, the pipe lineup and some of the changes we've seen out there, like um, you know the number of helmets, for example, that you see out in the in the lineup. Uh, grand, you know, young kids really pushing the limit, and and um, and the girls and the women now too that are surfing so well. Um, you know, think back to, to the Lexus Pipe Pro and and. Um, you know, what Betty Lou did and what, what Katie did and, and uh, just the performances they're putting on. Like, what have, what have you known? You know, you've, been, you've obviously been going to the North Shore for a long time, surfing pipe uh, for a while, too. What are, the, what are the big changes that you've seen over the years and what are the things that you're most uh, impressed with these days out of pipe? Um, I mean, yeah, the lineup, it's definitely changed in some ways, but I still feel like the kind of the pecking order is alive and well. It's just maybe a little bit less, uh, like, I'm trying to think of the word, like, less, it, there's less fights and there's less kind of altercation, but I feel like the new generation of surfers, they're just clearly that good and they know the wave that well and yeah. they put in that much time to, they're going to be on the best rides. The, the guys that are from there that do this on a regular basis, like those are the guys that are sitting in the boil and they're positioned perfectly. They know the swell directions. And so they're getting the best ways. But then, um, yeah, like there's a lot more of a female presence out there, which I think is super cool. And like what the girls did this year in the contest is just like mind blowing to me because it felt like the, the curve of performance is just like really, really accelerating. And, I think those events and them running in good waves is giving them the confidence to try though because when you go paddle out there and there's 150 people and you're trying to like learn how the wave works and position and like be confident to get over the ledge and do all that, it's really challenging. So the events, if anything, are just giving them an opportunity to push themselves and I think by them having the opportunity to push themselves, they're all looking at each other and they're all just improving. Um, so it's really fun to see. I mean. Molly and Katie seem like they're definitely just, they want it, you know? And then there's girls like Betty Lou and Tati, and I mean, a lot of them do, but um, it's really special to see kind of some hard work and probably some pretty bad wipeouts come to fruition with some pretty incredible rides. 
Yeah, it's like progression in real time. You know, like in, like you mentioned, it's like it's 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 easier to figure things out um, as well as difficult as it would be. Obviously, in the middle of a heat, um, if you've only have one other person in the heat versus battling a hundred people out there, yeah, I think your your comfort level would be uh, uh, probably go up. And it makes me really excited to see the women this year. Um, you know, obviously uh, Tahiti Hiopu has been on the on the WSL schedule for a while. Um, but going back to Cloudbreak this year, going back to Tavaru, as we actually see a really good set um, kind of pouring through here, a big set anyway. Um, I just, I'm so excited to see what the women do there. And, and the other, like the crazy thing is how young that crop is too, you know, like we look at, 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 at Katie and, and Betty Lou, I think 18 or 19, something like that. Molly, I think is 21. Um, it's, gosh, it's exciting. Um, it's it's as excited as I think I've ever been for women surfing um, and really looking forward to see what they do at some of these really heavy waves uh, over the next few months. Yeah, totally. Couldn't agree more. I've, uh, I'm enjoying being a spectator for all heats on the tour nowadays. There's, there's not really any heats that you want to walk away from. And um, I think that's just the testament of where the sport's at and how much time and effort people are putting into their performance and um, doing all the things that make you better. Sure. Well, what do you? Uh, what's what's next for you over the next few months? Um, shooting anything? Traveling? Uh, anything you want to tell us about uh, in in that capacity, or or maybe don't tell us about too if, if you don't want to. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm just at home in California now, um, just kind of honestly recovering. Like I, I felt like that that whole swell event and just it was kind of like a, a brain exploding experience. So I've just been really content, kind of just being at home with my friends and family and spending some good time with my girlfriend and. I'll be home until kind of middle of April and then I'm gonna go over to Indonesia and um, try to do some missioning and find some fun waves and film for uh, the Snapped movie as well as just some Body Glove, Monster, Channel Islands, Smith, whatever, just get some kind of uh, good assets to kind of distribute to the brands that I ride for and try to find some good waves without that many people. <laughs> That's my dream. This sounds like a great plan. Um, yeah. Well, well, Parker, you know, I, I, I know you, you uh, pro probably need to go. We thank you for joining us. It's been great to talk to you. Love hearing about uh, your experience with that big cloud break swell. Uh, best of luck with, with any, uh, any upcoming Hawaii swells or any other traveling. Uh, hit us up, too, if you need, you need a hand with any forecasting stuff, although I know you're pretty dialed. Raj, you guys, thanks so much, and, and thanks for featuring me on this, and um, thank you for kind of, I, I think, just upping your guys' content. I think you guys have always done a really good job, and um, I'm excited to, to see and, and kind of watch your guys' projects unfold throughout the next year, and um, yeah, I might see you over in Hawaii. I might try to sneak over there. If I watch this cam anymore, I'll probably end up booking a ticket before the end of the day, so hopefully. <laughs> Nice, nice. Well, Parker, thanks again. Appreciate the kind words and, and uh, yeah, hope you score over the next few few weeks and, and few months here. Right on, you guys. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon. You. Yep. See ya. Aloha. All righty. So, what's new, John? How are you? Good to see you. Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, uh, you know, like I wanted to ask him, I want to say, what is it on a perfect day, on each other perfect day, perfect setup, what is your favorite wave, backdoor or pipe? Oh, shit, sorry, man. What is I yours? Have, uh, you should have yelled, yelled at me. What is yours, Kevin? Because I know you get out there, especially in the, when you get out there body surfing. Do you, do you, yeah, do you I, prefer backdoor or pipe? Uh, to body surf, I like pipe better. But I'm backdoor, I, or I've, I've body surfed backdoor waves, but it gets sketchy really fast. It's it's shallow, um, and so like if it's if it's small and I'm surfing, I like backdoor better than pipe. But like, I don't, I won't surf out there, you know, really if it's over like four foot. To tell you the truth, um, you know, like four foot of line, just because the the waves get pretty sketchy, obviously, but more so like, like I don't really care to, to surf in that crowd. Like I'll just kind of go up the beach or, or down the beach or, or find something else. But to go out and body surf is really fun because you, you can sit in, inside everybody and, and um, you know, you're, you're not, I'm not really worried about getting caught inside. You can just go underneath everything. You're not trying to duck dive aboard or anything like that. So these are like, I love these days to go out and, and body surf and, and get a couple 
because um, you it's in my opinion it's the best body surfing wave in the world uh, you get barreled all day long and and contrary to what you believe john warren you can actually come out of barrels when you body surf not always but you know here and there i'll get one mike stewart because he comes yeah. out every single barrel he ever he ever drops in on probably mark cunningham too <laughs> I just meant uh, it's it's harder it's harder to come out of barrels, um, which you know you know pays tribute to how hard it can be to I mean the body surf you know as far as like the reward it's uh, it's definitely it's definitely challenging um, you know it's just it's uh, I would imagine it's hard to pump you know to get that speed um, I mean I body surf occasionally but I don't I don't body surf pipe but I, just, I body surf some short pound here. You know, but uh, yeah, it's um, definitely challenging to, to pull into barrels and pull out of barrels, uh, slide down the face on your body. I'm not saying my success rate is super high. Like, you know, my batting average is, <laughs> is probably, I'm below the Mendoza line for sure. I'm probably like above 25 or something like that. Um, <laughs> yeah. so, you know, I, <laughs> I was, I was I was I was gonna say hello and and welcome everyone real quick for anyone that uh, is is joining us now. We are uh, this is uh, Surfline Live at Pipeline. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you might be joining us in the world. Uh, we're stoked to have you. Uh, we've got uh, pumping swell, pumping late season swell here at Pipeline, and um, you know filled in overnight. Uh, nice conditions. Uh, I'm Director of Forecasting Kevin Wallace, um, joined by Senior Forecast Manager. Jonathan Warren and uh, we're just we're playing around with some new toys in all honesty we've got some new kind of cool broadcast toys um, and speaking of new toys um, as we as we get through this set coming through we have Jake Telkamp who's uh, our social media manager and he is down on the beach with bodyboard legend Andrew Carr uh, so we're gonna see if we can switch over to Jake here and and uh, not chat with him because he can't hear us but uh, we'll listen to him and uh, listen to him talk with Andrew. So we're going to head over that way. We're trying. It's coming. Another set. Another set looming out the back, just corduroying out there. Cool. Yeah, guys. Um I'm Andrew Carr. I'm here with Austin Kalama and Pace. We just came over from Maui for, well, they're coming from the day. I'm probably going to stay for a week or so. There's a really good late season run of swell. And I love this time of year is the best time to come surf pipe, I think, because all the pros are gone. All the international guys are gone. So kind of adjust the boys out. You get score a much less crowd session. Um, but anyway, yeah, right now it's looks pretty good it's not as big as i thought it would be um i thought it was going to be kind of like a little bit more consistent more second reefers but i did see a couple second reefers which that's the game plan for me today i want to sit out the back wait for one of those and roll in um everyone has their different approaches out here um but for me especially being a bodyboarder and with the crowd well being a bodyboarder i feel like you either want to sit on the end bowl and kind of scoop into it or get in from second reef because otherwise the guys on the big boards are going to get the wave first from deep on the first reef peak. So anyway, um, different approaches, but yeah, it looks looks fun. I think the swell is going to drop a little bit through the day, but should still be pretty solid. And yeah, I think it's pretty much just the boys out there right now. So it's always good when you know everyone in the lineup and everyone kind of knows who you are. You can kind of share waves and stuff. So it's going to be a good vibe. <laughs> All righty. Well, thank you, Andrew, for that report from the ground. Looks like that they were probably at Beach Park there, looking up the beach or down the beach, I should say. Um, we do have uh, some pretty good sized sets rolling through. You know, I would say this is uh, Hawaiian scale solid six to eight foot with a, a couple of bigger sets. You know, the occasional second reef roll in, as, as Andrew mentioned. Um, and usually as, as we start to see sets move out to second reef, that's usually a pretty good indication that they're in the you know, roughly 10 foot range, uh, Hawaiian scale. So by face size, um, we're one and a half to two times that size. We're gonna have a look at a replay here in just a second of that set that rolled through um, just, a, uh, just a minute ago. Body scale size would give that mostly in that double overhead range with occasional triple overhead bombers. Like, man, this that was a great peak right great there. Nice little, Nice little pocket ride right there. Not quite fully in there, but getting a good vision, I'm sure. Yeah, it's uh, 
you know, it's, it's, <laughs> do we want to open that can of worms, Kevin? Um, we want to talk about, oh, uh, what, what can of worms right are we now, talking about, Judd? Can of worms are the body scales, um, the different scales in the world. <laughs> you got oh, the faces. Oh, that can of worms. Oh, boy. You got uh, lion scale. You got, you got body scale. You got, uh, what I like to call the Aussie New Zealand scale, which is somewhere between Hawaiian and faces. Um, but yeah, it's, <laughs> it makes, I do, makes I'll, I'll say that I, I personally, Ooh, um, I, I personally like communicating in a, a body height scale just because that is at least a semi universal language. I think, um, yeah. I would hope that, you know, if you say double overhead, that, that, means similar things to most people uh otherwise it, it can get a little confusing a lot of times i'll, I'll say both too just to, depending on who i'm talking with so like uh you know six to eight foot hawaiian so roughly you know 10 to 15 foot faces something like that so that there's nothing lost in translation um and or the other thing that we'll do a lot and i know you do this a lot too when when you know if you're speaking with a photographer or pros or whatever you're helping them with a the forecast is uh, you could just compare it to past swells. Um, and that like, that's a big question. Like I was getting that question a bunch with this most recent cloud break swell was like, okay, like, what is it, you know, what is it, how does this compare to 2018 to 2022, 2012, things like that. And, and um, that's a, that's a nice way to have, I guess, like a universal language again, too, where um, you can say, that's going to be a little bit bigger. It's going to be a little bit smaller or a lot bigger, a lot smaller, whatever it happens to be less consistent, um, maybe not as perfect. Like it's, it's a, gr it's a great way, um, to just help quantify, uh, size conditions, everything like that. And I know like, um, it's something we try and do with, within our forecasts on the site too, especially if you, if you read the analysis that, that we put together, um, a premium analysis or, or some of the analysis that we put in our forecast boxes, um, try and and give that information more and more um, because I think it, it it seems to be really helpful. Um, I like to think of it in, in terms of that. Like, it does seem like there's a lot of these swells that many of us remember and and often remember really vividly. So it, it can be helpful to um, yeah to just to give that type of scale. I don't. Know, what do you think? What what's like? What do you, what do you what do you like to do when when communicating? something as as complicated as as a surf and or weather forecast well yeah i mean to touch on that last part that you're just that that like you're getting at like comparing it to previous uh swells like i mean you really can't go wrong with that um you know it, it's because no matter what that person calls it you know it, it's it, it's either bigger or smaller than that one or you know bigger than this last one but smaller than that previous one um you know it, it and so they can get a kind of good bearing of this. So no matter, no matter how they look at it, you know, like we're, it, it's, uh, it, they start to get in a ballpark. Um, but like the narrow it down and like when, you know, someone's asking you like exactly how, exactly how big is it? Is, should I bring a six, two or should I bring a six? Oh, you know, uh, <clears throat> you know, they, they want a little bit more specifics on just how big, um, I mean, I'm right there with you. Like you can't go wrong with the body scale. That's like universal language really. Um, you know, it, 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 when you see, when you look out at the ocean, you see a guy riding down the line of a wave, um, you know, it, it's, it's how big is it on that guy? Like, you know, is, is it up to his head? Well, then that's a head high wave, you know, it's, uh, you, you can't really go wrong. No matter if you call it three foot or if you call it six foot or what, uh, it's head high to everybody. Um, you know, and, and, and definitely should be measuring the waves by the faces. Um, that's for one. I, I definitely believe in that because uh, that's where you surf, right? You know, you, like you surf on the face and, um, you know, it, it, and you bring in waves like Chopu, like whereas the back of it's two foot and the front of it is 10 feet. Um, so what are you going to call it? You're going to call it two foot wave? No, you're going to call it a 10 foot wave, <laughs> you know, because it's, it's a, you know, with it being a surging type of wave. It just makes sense to measure the measure the faces and uh, it, the body skill is a universal language, I think, across the board, no matter where you go in the world. Um, and then when you get bigger, you know, it's like you're not going to be saying, oh, it's five to six times overhead. You know, then at that at that point, when you start getting an XL size surf and just, eh, you know, that's that's 
th that's where it's tough. Like, you know, you, you kind of say either go by Hawaiian scale, depending on who your audience is or, or go by faces. Um, you know, is it a 60 foot wave or is it a 30 foot wave? Um, you know, it, it, <laughs> it's big. So we can just drop that in there. It's, it's yeah. big. Only it's experts big. should be out there. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's a toe swell. Um, you know, just terms like that, but it, it's, but more, more often than not though, the surf falls somewhere in the, in the flat to double overhead range for most places, most of the time. So it's, it's, I think the body scale is the best way to go about it when you're scal when you're calling the surf on a regular basis for everywhere in the world. Is that how you typically forecast is you just be like, yeah, it's going to be somewhere between flat and double overhead. <laughs> yeah. Bring, uh, bring your skin board, but also bring your gun. Um, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> Um, but I mean, you can't go wrong. Um, yeah, but yeah, we, Most we of always time, try no. to. <laughs> <Nailed> it. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah. you know, one thing I wanted to touch on here uh, was was one of the things that. Uh, so those that don't know, we had we had Parker Coffin on earlier today, um, and uh, giving us a, a rundown on Fiji. Um, of his experience on that last special spell event that just happened there. Um, you know, and, and, and one of the things that he touched on was, uh, you know, him and some people, I guess, were thinking that was maybe go at it, going to be an in-betweener size. Uh, you know, for those that don't know, uh, the, you know, what he was trying to touch on is how there's different, how there's different ledges out there. There's the outer ledge and there's like the main reef, um, where typically most ways break. Um, on a regular basis uh, until you get a big enough swell that can start breaking on the outer ledge. Um, but a lot of times you get a swell that's big, but not big enough. And it's what you call the in-betweeners. Um, and so we forecast PG a lot. Uh, we uh, do it on the site and, you know, on a regular basis, but we also do it uh, for special forecasting for pros and, and uh, trips and stuff like that, that those guys are going on. And, and that's one of the main questions that people ask is, is it going to be an in-betweener swell for cloud break? Um, so it's, it's where we have to, you know, separate yes or no. Is it going to be a wash through kind of size or is it going to be breaking on the outer ledge? And, you know, people are trying to plan a trip. If you're a big wave surfer, if you're going to pull the trigger on uh, buying those plane tickets and whatnot, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely definitely creates a challenge. I think we have it dialed in pretty well now that you know when we see certain numbers uh, come across on you know what what the storm's performing, um, what the models are outputting, and and as we get data in, we we can we, we have we have a certain uh, threshold that it needs to cross to be an outer ledge. Um, and this last one definitely definitely hit that mark, and it was just awesome to see it to come to fruition. And guys like Parker Coffin score epic waves. Yeah, how about this, this block right now? Setting up. Yeah. Good size. Good size. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, um, uh, the the guy was on earlier, uh, the body surfer, I, or body the body boarder, I forgot his name. <laughs> Kevin, if you can help me out. That. But, oh, yeah. um, he uh, he was, uh, you know, he touched on how he uh, thinks the swell might be easing over the, over the rest of the day. Um, I, I am to assure you that it's not. Um, looking at the buoys and knowing, you know, as far as arrival time for buoy one, it's just Northwest of Hawaii and with the numbers we're getting on that buoy, um, you know, and, and for that energy to, to reach the North shore, um, I, I, I will assure you that this well is going to be holding pretty steady, uh, for the next several hours. We're going to continue to see sets like you just now saw on camera, um, for at least the next five or six hours. Uh, you know, it starts to lose a little energy towards the towards the later part of the day, the period will start to come down a little bit um, from what's been this morning. But we're going to see solid surf all day long. Um, so expect to see more sets like you just watched roll through. Yeah, it seems like it's, it's cleaned up just a little bit now. Um, sun, the sun's hitting it a little bit more, it appears. And um, I would say, you know, it's not it's not perfect conditions. We've mentioned that a couple of times, just talking about what's going on today. You know, the swell the swell's really nice. The swell size, period direction are all really good. It's the wind that is is kind of the vari variable. And as we um, heading into into today and considering when we were considering doing something like this, a surf line live, um, the wind was the real variable for us. And it was one I, you know, a few days ago, I was going, uh, maybe. Um, so it's nice to see we've, we've had a window here. Again, it's, it's not perfect. It's 
uh, coming up out of the east northeast. Ideally, John, as you mentioned earlier, you know, we really want to see either straight east or in a perfect world, we see something out of the east southeast to southeast. Um, when you get that type of wind with just a little bit of south in it, that's when it's truly just straight offshore. Um, and it, it tends to be lighter. You know, even if you have a stronger east southeast wind pattern around the island, so to speak, um, you know, you've got relatively high mountains just behind pipeline or hills, I suppose I should say, kind of just behind Sunset Elementary. And that will do a good job of, of, of kind of dampening those east southeasterly trades at least a little bit. Um, so a lot of times you just get you know, super clean, almost glassy conditions. Today you can see there's a little bit more of that side chatter uh, going into the surf. Still some really good waves, but um, I wouldn't call this, this isn't like an A-plus pipe day. I would say it's, um, there's some moments of brilliance, but um, it's also pretty challenging with this wind and, and at this size. Absolutely, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, it's checking the boxes as far as swell direction, um, the period for pipe, um, you know, it, it like ideally the, the, the storm and the fetch was aimed a little bit better towards, towards, towards the islands and maybe pushed a little bit more directly at them. Uh, but you know, I mean, it's still, it's still pretty consistent out there. It's, it's a little right now, yeah. Size. yeah. There's a really good set coming through and looks like there's more lines out the back. Um, you know, it, it's, it, and when you touched on the trade winds, Kevin, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, this is your typical wind in Hawaii on a normal basis. You have these east northeast trades, um, you know, and, and thankfully, uh, most of the north shore of Oahu faces to the northwest. So east northeast trade winds, like we're seeing today and mo most, most days of the year, uh, is a side to offshore. So it's still pretty clean out there, as you can see. I mean, a lot of, people on the east coast would call it straight clean um you know but it, it's uh it, it you know when, when we see those winds uh decrease and turn to a more straight offshore flow like from the southeast like like you were touching on earlier kevin is uh you know you don't normally see that that's that's uh, an occasional occurrence um as and you typically see that during the winter time when you have fronts that are swinging across the north the north pacific um, the, you know, tail end of the front will move through the islands and, uh, you know, high, you'll have high pressure slide further east uh, between California and, and Hawaii. Uh, as that front approaches, uh, the trade winds that were blowing out of the east northeast will start to clock around um, ahead of that front. Um, so the, the magic window for those ideal winds would be just ahead of a front, usually. Um, and then, uh, and hopefully, the storm that was associated with that front kicked in a solid swell that arrives at the same time that those winds start veering southeast and that's when the magic happens as far as uh you know a peaking swell uh being greeted by the the best winds uh that you'll see for the north shore southeast um but it'll, sometimes it doesn't always line up just you know the front moves through quicker or not soon enough um you know if, if the front pushes through too quick then you have the swell arrive you know, behind the front, the winds start clocking around, you get a southwest Kona wind, uh, then it clocks around even more to a straight on shore out of the northwest um, as high pressure builds in behind the front. So it's, 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 a, it's a timing thing. Um, sometimes everything lines up perfectly and you get epic days uh, and then sometimes they don't quite line up, uh, which is what we've seen a lot this winter time. Um, we've seen some solid swells, but not, you know, the conditions weren't all that great. Uh, yeah, yeah. It uh, there was it was it felt like there was basically a a month of Kona wind uh, from you know I don't know starting what late December early January through a good chunk of the month um, where it was just tons of like south south southwest to west Kona wind days which for the north you know for most of the North Shore is not it's obviously it's not good it's it's um, it's onshore it's poor but uh, you need to get these little pockets here and there. Uh, they can really be pretty good. I thought uh, it was, you know, like say for the North Shore of Maui, um, the non-big wave spots, because it wasn't really, a, it wasn't a good, I wouldn't say it was a good Jaws year. There were a couple swells, but um, a lot of times they were they were just kind of funky and or with bad wind. Um, but a lot of the normal breaks uh, on Maui really saw, I thought, saw a nice, had a nice stretch there with all those those south or southwest wind days where it's super, you know, super clean. Normally it's blowing 
20 to 25 knots side shore out of the east, east, northeast, and then, wow, how's this set? This thing has been going on for it was like the last 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, here's our second reefer, too. Where's that bodyboard? He said he, he said he likes these roll ins. I don't see him out there yet, but that was his wave, that was his gem to a closeout. <laughs> Just roll into a giant yeah. closeout. Yeah, it's uh, you know, it it's 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 definitely been a strange year. Um, you know, there there has been a there's been some epic days. I mean, we uh, earlier we queued up some wave some wave of the days, and and I mean, we might even see some come out of today and and the rest of this week. Um, but so far this season is what I would call a hit or miss. You know, it hasn't been as rambunctious as previous years. Um, you know, for those that don't know, like in a typical winter season for the North Shore, uh, it, it ramps up through the fall. Uh, the peak month for swell activity is January. Um, you know, that, that that it doesn't always mean it's the most epic month. Um, it just means there's 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 a lot more wave action. It's like it's 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 constantly well overhead, um, you know, if not XXL uh, throughout that month. Um, so that's usually the peak for swell activity. And then it starts to simmer through February and come down through March and, you know, through the spring. Um, and uh, this year it was it, it, it kind of ramped up a little bit through December and into early January. And, and then it then after that, it was just kind of hit or miss. It was like like it, it would rain um, on you know it'd be stormy, rainy conditions, bad winds with the arrival of solid swells, and then by the time it cleaned up, it dropped down to like head high. Um, and it was kind of like that back and forth battle through uh, January and February, um, and most of March really. Uh, you know, typically during at this point of the year in a usual year. Um, you know, you see a lot of swell features on Surfline, you know, covering swell events uh, on the North Shore and pipeline and stuff like that. But there hasn't been really too many so far this year. Um, and there's a reason for that. But uh, looking forward, um, you know, we have this swell now. Um, and we have more pulses lining up. Uh, you know, uh, Mark, uh, when you get a chance, um, if you can, if you can uh, queue up that video, the before before oh. we go to the forecast, we're we're actually gonna, we're going to jump back to the beach because uh, Jake Telecamp awesome. is has caught up with Jake Mackey, um, who's had some of the best waves of the day so far. Uh, for those who have been watching for a little bit, he's been on he was on the red board with the white helmet. Uh, so we're going to check back in with the Jakes. <laughs> oh, brought a Jake with the nuts one. <laughs> How was that one you got blown out of? And, um, I, think, I think some of the better waves of my winter out of height this morning, even though it looks like junk. So it's like kind of classic, like two or ten kind of thing. Pretty much, yeah. I figure go out and try. There's not a lot of people out. Not lucky. Nice. And then how was that last one? The jump. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be good, and then I saw it look kind of almondy. I don't know. It might have been a nose, but. I poked and then there's a big one behind it, so I just came. And you think you'll go back out later today? Yeah, I'm gonna watch all morning and hopefully it just stays. At least, hopefully it gets better than this. Sick. Alright, dude. Good job out there. Alright. Shoot. Thanks. Here's the replay of Jake's wave. Oh, that was that one. Yeah, that was that one that, oh. I'm, that I'm gonna give him a make. I'm, I'm going to give make. a make for that one. Yeah. That was sick. The one footer make. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, having that, that bright red board is awesome. You could definitely pick that guy out of the lineup every time. And you just catch a lot of them. I like, I feel like every yeah. time I was looking at the camera, I saw the red board. Yeah. How's that? I feel like this it's set hasn't stopped in like 20 minutes. <laughs> no, I know that's like perfectly, yeah. but like, this has been, it's been a non-stop wave for the last probably five or ten minutes anyway. Oh, oh yeah. I thought he was going to come out of that thing. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, Mark. Uh, when you get a chance, um, it'd be great if you can uh, queue up uh, just just re reshow our uh, forecast reel. Um, kind of give people a visual of the North Pacific and these purple blobs. Um, so the, yeah, we we the set's going to keep going for the next thirty minutes, John. We're we're going to go off air before <laughs> you can do the forecast. Thank you. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, it's it's uh, this is probably like when the storm was peaking, uh, as far as you know, consistent strength um, over over the hours, uh, you know that it held a certain strength for um, in that fetch aimed at Hawaii. Um, so just constantly pumping out these swell lines towards Hawaii, and and uh, it's just been a never ending never ending set. Um, yeah. All right, so here's this forecast. Uh, I'll take you guys through it. Um, so you can kind of get an idea of what the North Pacific is looking like in terms of uh, modeling and seeing purple blobs and colors come across the ocean. Um, so uh, we, we've seen a series of lows move off Japan, uh, like this one right here. So this is the storm right here pushing out the pulse that we're seeing right now today uh, that's topping out today um, around 15, 16 seconds. Uh, so still a good one, still overhead, well overhead, pushed double overhead at uh, better breaks like pipeline or whatnot. Um, favorable direction again for pipe. Uh, but trades look really strong on Saturday, even stronger than today. Um, so that's not so great there. The third pulse, however, uh, right now at this point, uh, you know, it's still underway right now. We're still getting in, you know, so receiving data from that thing um, as satellites pass over it and we get, uh, you know, the satellite observations of, of how strong these winds actually are, how big the seas are getting, uh, you know, we can we can calculate all that and and uh, get an expected uh, deep water swell height that we're that we're going to see out of that one projected. Again, it's going to build in over Sunday and top out on Monday, um, and that one at this point is looking to be just similar, like in the same ballpark. Let's just say that much. Uh, same ballpark as this swell. There is potential to be maybe even a little stronger. Um, but we'll have to wait and see this thing actually unfold uh, further to to lock that in. But I, I would say it's going to be close to in size to the swell we're seeing right now today, um, and more westerly, uh, which yeah, I'm thinking more like around a 295 to 315 degrees. Uh, pipe loves that direction, um, and what we're hoping for is the winds to improve for that third pulse. Um, so right now, today and through the, the rest of this week, we're, we're seeing east northeast trades. Uh, we're, we're, we're hoping by that the arrival of that third pulse on Monday um, that the high pressure slides a little bit further east and the trades veer more easterly to even east southeast. So a little breezy, but more straight offshore. Um, so we're, we're hoping those winds come to fruition for that pulse, and it looks like a good time. But in a nutshell, it's it's a triple banger swell today swell saturday swell monday and and they're all they're all locked in you know the, the storms are out there the winds on the ocean the swells are in route um so you can you can bank on some more swells coming to finish out this week and kick off next week um and yeah really really good thing to see for pipeline this late in the season um uh, but it's not uncommon you know uh, it, uh march typically performs um and even april uh, it, it starts, you know, definitely starts to slow down, but but you still get some really good swells in April. Um, I mean, there's even been some years we've seen some pretty decent sized swells in May, but usually by May things kind of shut down in the North Pacific, um, relatively speaking, uh, when you compare it to the other months before it. Um, but I I I I'm I'm optimistic. I think we're going to have a really good. Uh, late season run uh, through, you know, the, uh, obviously through the rest of this month, like we just talked about, but I think April is going to see a few, a few uh, good swells as well. Um, yeah. So uh, Kevin, you had something you want to ask? Well, yeah. So we, we've got a question, a uh, uh, question that came in from the, from the chat that I want to, we'll hit in just a second about the sand. Uh, I know you are a, a passionate uh, connoisseur of, of pipeline sand and North shore sand. So I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to lobby a softball here in just a second. Um, but before we get to that, you know, when the thing that, that stood out to me, uh, number one, about this particular storm that set up this swell, um, but also the overall pattern that we're seeing in the North Pacific, um, starting with, with this storm, the thing that I really liked is it is it the storm took a very nice track towards Hawaii. 
Um, and it also had um, what we call, it's kind of a geeky thing to say, but good high pressure support. So, um, you know, anytime you have a fetch develop, a, what we, a storm develop, it typically is you've got an area of low pressure, a storm, an area of high pressure next to it. Um, and the, 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 the greater the gradient between that low and that high, the stronger the winds will be. And, and what we've found over the years, this was something that, that Sean taught us early on, Sean Collins, our founder, um, is when you have the stronger the high gets, um, often the more consistent the wind within that fetch is. And the more consistent the wind is within the fetch, the more consistent the swell and the surf can be. Um, so those are two things that stood out to me when we were looking at this swell developing was Storm took a nice track towards Hawaii and also had, I wouldn't say it was great high pressure support, that high wasn't super strong, but it was around 1030, 1032 um, millibars. Um, you know, that's kind of in the mid range for, for uh, strengths of high. So that that's really helped with, I think, the consistency of the swell. We, we've seen it's a little lully at times, but then you get this flurry of activity and and, you know, eight, 10, 12, like, I don't even know what that, how many waves were in that last set, or if that was the same, we're saying it's a single set or not, but it just, you know, kind of went on forever. Um, the other thing that's really stood out to me within this run, because it, it started with a big swell last week, end of last week, it wasn't very good, it came with north winds, or for the most part, it, it just wasn't very good. Um, but it was a really big swell for the middle part of March, so that's what's kicked off this run here. Um, and all of these swells uh, really have a lot of west in them. And that, that is atypical for late March. Um, you know, we're getting towards the end of the season, end of the winter season, really end of the winter season, and kind of end of the shoulder season, off season, whatever you want to call it. And typically, like early in the season, so say se late September into October, um, even into early November, and then end of the season, from roughly March and April, you tend to see more northerly direction swells. Like most of your storm activity is up around the Aleutian Islands and into the Gulf of Alaska. Um, you're not seeing these storms coming out of the West Pacific and off of Japan as much. So that's that's really what stood out to me with this run is is um, um, it's special. It can be special for pipeline just because of the direction the pipe prefers uh, more of a westerly swell. Um, all right. Uh, we're, we're getting to your, your softball here, John. I know you've just been chomping at the bit to talk about sediment transport, movement, sand, the pipeline. Um, you, know, you hear a lot about it, uh, the importance of sand, the pipe, whether it's, it's around events, whether it's around something like this, and how sand plays a role in the quality of um, the quality of the shape, the quality of the wave, the pipeline. Um, so two-part here. So what's the sand doing on a on a you know summer and winter basis where is it going where you know why is it a pipe sometimes and where is it going and then um if the sand is moving away like when does it come back or how does it come back and what's going on with 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 that uh that sediment transport uh, all right um well the sand is always moving um you know at, at any beach um, you know, you have currents, you have long, you have what is called long short currents that are flowing, you know, the parallel to the coast um, that are that are that are generated by swells from different, you know, depending on the direction of the swells and wind, um, anything that can move that move the water. Um, <clears throat> and on the North Shore, or just Hawaii in general, uh, the, the grains of sand are larger than, you know, a lot of other beaches around the world. Um, but it's 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 just a larger grain sand, so it doesn't take much to move uh, as the water. And then, given that the North Shore of Hawaii uh, it sits directly in the path of uh, very strong swells throughout the year, especially through the winter, um, that you know, and it, these strong the energy from these strong swells is just can just move that sand around. All right, so. Typically, at the beginning of a season, uh, you have a lot of sand. You know, just let's just zero in on pipeline as uh, as we're as we're watching this break here, and and it's a it's an issue for pipeline. Um, other other breaks on the North Shore may not so much you know, it may not be so big of a factor, but for pipeline, it's a huge factor. It can make or break a session. Um, it can be a safety hazard. Uh, you know, it, 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 you can have all the boxes checked as far as the swell size, the wind and all that stuff. But if the, if the sand is piled up on the reef, uh, the wave is just, you know, it's just junk. It's, you get a lot of closeouts. Um, 
So typically in the beginning of the season, you have a lot of sand that's built up on the reef uh, throughout the summer. Now, the sand transport during the summer is usually not so quickly. It's just a gradual thing throughout the months of summer with uh, you have the prevailing east-northeast trades that can be really strong at times uh, and trade swell. So just a gradual process. Now, trade swell doesn't really get into the North Shore so great. It kind of bypasses and moves offshore, but that swell pushing and sweeping along the north side of the island, you still get a current that pushes down. It's just, it's it's not a strong current, but it's a constant current um, that, that gradually transports sand from the end of the previous season um, to the beginning of the next season. So we're talking about, you know, as we make our way like September and into November, um, you got a lot of sand that usually is built up on the reef at pipe that is transported from Rocky Point down through Pupakea and it gets trapped on the reef at pipe um, and it builds up and and as it builds up it starts making its way further out into the lineup and starts filling in all the holes of the reef uh, making it very flat out there especially the in section of the wave where the channel is at um, the sand builds up in the channel it just makes it all flat you don't really have that defined channel anymore it's just all uniform bottom so a lot of waves when they come in in the early season uh, they might start off great, but then they just line out and close out. Um, plus, you usually have a high berm on the beach, and when the swells walk, you know, run up the beach, they reflect back, and you get this backwash that comes back out into the lineup. Um, so it creates a, just all funky, funky uh, backwashy waves with a lot of closeouts. Uh, and you know, if it's a sizable swell and you're pulling into a double overhead barrel, that's just gonna end into a very, very shallow in section closeout. You know, it's, it's uh, you gotta be worried about your safety at that point. Um, so how you get that sand out of there? Um, well, uh, it, 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 the early season, you'll hear from a lot of pros uh, from interviews that they have, like they hate the early season. Like they try to stay away from the early season is for that very reason. And then, you know, they took, that they typically want to wait for a few good, solid west northwest swells to move in uh, to start clearing that sand out. Uh, so we got a rider up right here, getting a little pocket ride in there. Was that our was that our guy Jake right there on the red board again? Is he back out there, or is this from earlier? Uh, this, yeah, this is this a replay. Oh. Oh, okay, so uh, another red border. I like my, I'm going to be the Florence, actually. So, uh, in the, you know, so you, you really need to see a few good northwest swells, more westerly angled swells, push that sand back off um, as it will switch that current. Uh, so if you're looking at your screen right here, uh, as I said, when the swells are more northerly or easterly, uh, you, you the sand comes down from right to left. So when you look at your screen, it comes down from Rocky Point down towards Pipeline. Um, so you need a more westerly angled swell to reverse that, the risk reverse that long short current from left to right start clearing that sand back out start pushing it back down towards rocky point um, and you can often see on our cameras through the season uh, the the sand at pipeline you know it'll be in view and then it's not in view and that comes and goes with each swell and same with rocky point you can watch the cam at rocky point and there's sometimes you're you could see the actual rocky point and then other times it's just a sand it's just a sand point um, as that sand was pushed back down there um, so you need some stronger westerly swells. You need bigger swells. If you know if you want it to happen overnight, uh, you need a like an XXL swell from the west northwest to really just push it all out. But it can happen overnight. There's been plenty of times we you know the sand we all built up, and then a big XL swell is filling in through the night, and by the next day, half that sand, if not more, is gone uh, because it doesn't take too much uh, you know too long with that strong of a swell and those larger grains sand you know, for it to clear out of there. Um, so, and, and but as Kevin touched on earlier, um, typically in the shoulder season, so the fall and the spring, you get more northerly angled swells. Uh, so you don't really get too many big west northwest swells in the early season. Um, in fact, you have swells coming more from the north angled, which is counterproductive for pipeline sand. It just piles up more sand. So after the all summer long, uh, with the trade winds and trade swell kind of just gradually building it up there then you get some north swells in the mix that just put even more sand on there um and it's it's not until like through december that we're seeing a uh, more regular occurrence of west northwest northwest swells moving through especially in january usually by january it kind of pushes all out of there cleans up by 
clears it out. It's gone through February uh, and into March. And um, as the interview we had on earlier, I think even uh, um, Parker Coffin touched on is how, you know, they, they, they tend to favor the late season for the North Shore because, you know, all that sand's gone by then for pipeline. Um, usually because <laughs> uh, you can have an odd year where you get some north swells like this this has been a back and forth year where mm-hmm. we've had the sand leave and the sand come back sand leave oh uh, wait this is a let's watch this live wave right now uh, running away running away from the barrel all right anyways uh so this year has been a back and forth year it's it's been cleared out in fact I, if if i remember correctly the very beginning of the year like the first pretty decent spells we had in in november the sand was pretty cleared out at that point uh then it all came back then it went away it came back throughout the entire season through january february because we had a lot of north angled uh spells in the mix um and unfortunately a lot of times the north swell would happen before a west swell so it's been a back and forth battle the north swell pile it back on the reef at pipe and then a solid west swell will come in and main concern is uh you know like especially on the initial side of the building or the, the building side of that swell it's not being so great because too much sand you have to wait till the day after when the swell is more on the, the dropping trend for enough sand to clear out to get good again um yeah so uh, i hope i answered your question kevin but it's 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 it depends on the the angle of the swell the more westerly swells especially longer period um, and a bigger swell will clear that sand from when you look at your screen from left to right. So from west to east, um, and then uh, northerly angled swells come from that north to northeast direction will push the sand back down towards pipe um, from right to left or from east to west. So it's it's just a constant back and forth battle on the north shore uh, depending on your s- swells. What what was the middle thing again? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh yeah. <laughs> and i'm i zoned out for a little bit i'm sorry uh, it was good it was that was excellent though. it was it was it was it was mostly thorough but i could have i could have used a little more john just just a bit more no that was fantastic i appreciate it um yeah all right well we we are uh we are surfline forecasters um i am kevin wallace I'm here with John Warren. Welcome. If you're just joining us, uh, we are. Uh, this is Surfline Live uh, Pipeline on the North Shore of Oahu. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're in the world you may be joining us from. Uh, we're happy to have you here um, on, on our Surfline Live on, on YouTube. If this is something that you do enjoy and you'd like to see more of, we want to do more of that. So please like and subscribe. Um, we, we greatly appreciate it. Um, John and I like getting on here and, and uh, uh, just talking about forecasting stuff. I can listen to John talk all day. I do listen to John talk all day quite a bit, um, but it's always fun. He's a, he's a wealth of knowledge, uh, and I, I appreciate his, his commentary. We've got uh, solid surf here at Pipe. Um, you know, we're in the solid six to eight foot range. Uh, that's local, kind of local scale, uh, probably roughly 10 to 15 foot bases with a few bigger sets from time to time. It's been mostly first reef pipe, but we're seeing some some second reef roll-ins from time to time. Conditions are not perfect, but they're okay. We've got east northeasterly trades kicking in, so it's like a side offshore wind. You can see a little bit of chatter here too. This is our backdoor angle. You can see it's starting to white cap out on the outside there. That wind is 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 picking up. We expect it to build through the afternoon. So um, conditions will, will probably worsen a little bit as this wind kicks in a little bit more. And then as the North Shore and, and pipeline are apt to do uh, almost every day, uh, it'll probably clean up and probably get a little bit better this evening. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see some really great waves come in through this evening. Um, have seen as we see the set roll through here too. Um, you know, and a pretty good wipeout. Speaking of wipeouts, this is a fantastic sea that I've been waiting for, just looking at this note on screen for the last 20 minutes. But we have, when we get through this set, actually, uh, we had a crazy wipeout. Oh. Not we, uh, I wasn't part of it. Um, but how's the set? Yala Stewart had a crazy wipeout from January 22nd. We're going to take a look at after we watch this set, um, which is pretty insane. Oh. That one guy almost made it. He was probably right there at the end. 
Uh, we're going to go to Yala's uh, wipeout, his worst wipeout at Pipeline. This is from January 22nd, 2024. Um, I want to say it's probably the worst wipeout I've had at Pipe. Yeah, the swell was pretty sick today and the conditions were unreal. Yesterday was a big day, probably like 12 feet outer reefing wash throughs. And today was like 10 to 12 foot stackers on the first reef. It was like a hungry crew out there. There's the locals, there's the CT guys practicing. And yeah, yesterday was a maxed out day. Like I said, so I think a lot of people didn't surf and they wanted to wait till they got tamed. So I feel like a lot of people were more hungry this morning. So I kind of seen it coming in. I was like, this is a really good one if you can get under it. And a couple guys looked at it and Anthony stopped paddling and he told me to go. So I was like, put the head down a little bit. I, it looked like a really good wave when it was coming in. <laughs> it looked like I was in it really nicely. I was gonna get a nice transition. Every wave at pipe, you're at the top and you're gonna go down this huge drop. And pretty much I was like doing everything I'd always normally do. And then it just went only air. I was like, okay, I'm in the air and this is gonna be a gnarly wipeout or let's try to stick this. I felt like I was gonna make it, yeah. Never know, sometimes the ones you think you're not gonna make are the ones you actually let a butter landing and then you come out flying out of the barrel. <laughs> when I made impact, First thing first, you slap, and the wave had so much energy and double up behind that it pulled me back over the falls, and I went onto my back on the reef. And it was actually the first time I wore a helmet out there. And I was thinking in my head, like, this is the reason why I'm wearing a helmet in these types of situations. We've seen Kailani's wipeout and all my friends, Kowal's my best friend. He had a near-death experience out here. No one's more powerful than head trauma. I feel like our heads are the most, one of the most sacred things we have, so we gotta protect them as best as we can. Wow, so that's just, that's insane drone footage from Tucker Wooding. Uh, and then that was Mossy, Ryan Moss from Land, crazy wipeout. Um, as we, we get back to Pipeline Live and see Ooh. someone maybe coming out. Make it. Make it. Ugh. Oh, so close. I thought he was going to make that. Um, he had to be yeah, at that, the end. That was, that was there. Um, I'll say Tucker, you know, Tucker Wooding's drone footage, um, whether, whether from the clip we just saw, um, some of the footage that, that came out of that cloud break swell from roughly two weeks ago to, it just, it blows my mind um, how cool, how unique that perspective is um, to, to see it. It just stokes me out every single time. Like, not necessarily, I don't, <laughs> I hate seeing someone wipe out like that, but that footage was, was just incredible. Yeah, you see a uh... lot. Yala, how he tried charging that. He was like back during pipeline. He was like on the other wow. side of the peak, like the props for charging that and still trying to keep his feet on the board, like all the way down, all the way down to the end. He was still trying to, still trying to land it. It's awesome. It's such a scary spot to be um, when it's yeah. that big. And oh my gosh, how the line stacking up here too. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be pumping all day. So. Another one. Let's see if get a taker on this next one. Uh, nobody. Getting through. Probably a wise no take. Yeah, yeah. Lined out. You it's know, just like uh, a little a little channel. What do you think? Is that the way like combo of the wind and swell direction? Swell direction is pretty good. I was gonna say, oh maybe some of these look a little bit north, um, like this one does. Um, and that wind is just not quite there. It's okay, but it's like we've talked about a couple times. It's it's not perfect. It like kind of chandeliers just a little bit. So it's it's feast or famine. I feel like today. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, th thing has a lot to do with the a lot to do with the winds. Um, you know, if it was more straight offshore, we'd probably see a lot more makeable waves. Um, but yeah, you 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 know uh, what you touched on there, Kevin. Uh, that 
that set out a little bit more north and you get sets that seem a little more west um you know and and uh for those those at home that are wondering why like why is that isn't this same swell uh yeah it is uh, you know you don't we don't have two different swells it's not like there's two big lows out there pushing in like a north and a, and a and a west northwest like we've seen earlier in the season in fact during the wsl pipe pro uh they had a lot of that and which is why you know it created for some challenging conditions uh i wanted to call the event on and then when they did have it uh you know it was hard to get some good pipeline waves uh, some great backdoor waves out of that though um but it you know when you're looking at a storm over the ocean it has a, a large fetch that covers a large area of of the ocean with winds pointing towards the coastline you know you, it, it the fetch can range you know that's what we say when there's a swell it's coming from 300 320 degrees you know it's a 20 degree spread there um of of wind aimed towards your coastline so you do have you know sets coming from a more westerly angled sets coming from a more northerly angled all from the same system um you have that comboed with uh the track of the storm as it moves across the ocean. Um, and for Hawaii, a lot of times these, these, these storms will arc as a track, like almost like east, northeast, they kind of move up and around. Sometimes they push straight out of Hawaii. Sometimes they move just straight north. Um, but more often than not, they're kind of moving east, northeast across the ocean, kind of arcing up and around. So they might initially start further away from Hawaii, pushing out a west, northwest swell. And then as the storm tracks, uh, it, you, it, you, so you already have swell already in route towards Hawaii from the west northwest. As the storm arcs up and away, it's still generating swell and pushes swell from a northerly direction. So a lot of times, that more northerly angle, the rival of that, because it's coming closer to Hawaii, as it moves up and around Hawaii, those sets from that more northerly direction will arrive at the same time as the west northwest. So there are when you're at the beach, you'll have a more westerly set and a more northerly sweat. Uh, set just based on how the storm tracked. Um, so there's a lot of variables. You have just the track of the storm that can create that. You have the, just a broad, you know, a wind, a broad wind field over the ocean that can cover, you know, like thousands and thousands of s square miles. Uh, you know, so everything from a wet, you know, from 300 degrees to 320, like like in this case that we're seeing today. Um, so you got, you have sets coming from different directions it's not just all every set's coming from three ten degrees you know it, 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 there's, there's a spread in there and uh and then throw on throw on bathymetry and period so that's the third factor the third x factor uh is you have some longer period bands mixed with a shorter period um so the longer period swell will be refracting to a greater degree and sooner uh, by the offshore bathymetry. Um, and for pipeline, uh, you have the reef, the unique configuration of the reef out of out off outer log cabins and how it's shaped. Uh, it'll turn and bend and focus swells in towards pipeline from a more westerly angled, even though the raw angle might be 320 degrees, it arrives into pipeline at 300 degrees because it's turned that much um, by the reefs out off outer log cabins, and that's that'd be on a longer period bands and the shorter period that don't that doesn't quite feel the bottom at that at that distance from the coast. You know, it, it it'll start feeling the bottom closer to shore, so it starts bending and turning in a different way uh, based on how the bathymetry is at that threshold. So the different periods are turning and bending the sets depending on the period of those sets from different directions as well. So you got three big factors why you have sets coming, you know, it's more westerly and in other sets that's more northerly is uh, just the wind field of the fetch being broad, uh, the track of the storm and the bathymetry offshore, how it turns and bends the different period, you know, the different bands uh, into that particular spot on the coast. You have all these factors into play, which is, you know, you get this, this mix of sets from different angles. John, I've, I've got a, uh, a fun question for you. You, you are the, the, the guy at Surfline who uh, does all of our mechanics articles. For anyone not familiar with that, um, John does an awesome job of breaking down while, why different surf spots around the world behave the way they do. You know, what's going on from a swell 
exposure perspective, what's going on below the surface, uh, the underwater topography, the bathymetry, as you mentioned. Um, and so you've got a, a, a really great array of knowledge of, of those things. What's, what are the spots um, kind of around the world, one or two spots that to you just stand out in terms of, of bathymetry, in terms of, of kind of how freaky they are, so to speak, um, and, and how unique they are for their bathymetry and what they can do um, and what type of surf they can produce. Uh, yeah, you know, first, I, I just want to say I, I'd like to give a huge credit to the late, great Sean Collins. Um, this was one of the things that he was very, that he was very passionate about, um, that he has done for many, many years for Surfline before I was doing it. Um, and uh, he, you know, I, I, I was fortunate to work at Surfline when he was here and, and, and learn a lot of stuff from him. Um, in fact, uh, the, you know, the original mechanics of pipeline, original mechanics of Waimea were done by Sean Collins and, um, you know, just, just incredible wealth of knowledge in these pieces that he has, that he has, that he has put together. You can really put them all together and make a book. And, uh, you know, he, he, uh, I, I, I'm just honored to, to keep that torch going and, and carry on the legacy of the mechanics that, that we do here at Surfline. Um, you know, that, that Sean used to do. Um, so, uh, to your question, which a couple places around the world that have unique bathymetry, um, that maybe stand out the most to me, oh, there's so many, there's so many spots that have incredible things going on under the water. Um, you know, they're, they're like you each unique in their own way. Um, you know, from super tubos to, Porto Escondido to Piahi pipeline. Pipeline's one of them. Um, you know, they each have different kind of characteristics. I mean, shoot, really. I mean, to my own home, to my own home break here, like in Florida, uh, I, I, it's got some. Crazy you, you're holding the secret there. spot, dude. I wonder why I get to come out and surf that <laughs> place with you. Uh, you know, you're definitely, you know, definitely more more than welcome we go, go, out, we take, you take, go out on the bubby and, and just score some some uh solo peaks <laughs> yes yes uh but you have to you have to ride over there blind blind blindfolded um so you come know your way but uh yeah there's there's i mean so many spots around the world you know that the the true magic or you know the, the real x factor to every break that that's why it does what it you know why does a spot do what it's what it you know what, why is it known for this and it's the bathymetry you know it's it's uh it, you can have all these other factors you know check all these other boxes and stuff you know the wind and 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 swell but why the wave is the way you know, what it's known for like why pipeline has that shape and does that thing is because of the bathymetry you know if you were to change that bottom up offshore there it would be a completely different wave it, it, it you know the than what everybody knows it for. Um, but if, if I just had it, man, it, it, I would say the top three um, that I can just, that, that you know, let's just say spots that I think are, are you are unique in such a way that they're more interesting now, you know, like, cause you can say like a spot like cloud break, right? You know, cloud breaks an incredible way, but to me it's bathymetry is a little more boring. Um, you know, it's just straightforward. Um, there's not a lot of, craziness going on it's like you you have this reef platform and how it's shaped it's just perfectly shaped and the waves just bend and turn around this corner perfectly um but to me what interests me the most is the ones that have a lot of other variables and factors that come into play like offshore islands how it has to filter around different islands and bend and turn in and there's stuff way offshore that's pulling it and turning it then near shore there's there's a certain trench that 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 refracts it even further than you might have a jetty that it reflects off of and comes back in. And um, I mean, there's places like a Newport, like, you know, like the point is very, uh, is very interesting to me. Um, and <laughs> sorry, uh, Mark Beatty, um, I mean, Huntington Beach, um, and, but it's, it's uh, I would say like Piahi is a special place of what's going on offshore there. With the canyon, but that's kind of straightforward too. I, I would say super tubos, pipeline, um, and Haleiwa. 
uh, you know, it, it's, there's just so much more com- yeah, it's more complex. And that's why I think it's more interesting to me because just a lot more other things going on and every little variation in the swell and period means it's a completely different wave. Cool. Um, so. Yeah, that's, that's a great breakdown of that. Uh, well, John, it, I think uh, you and I are going to sign off. Um, we're going to keep the Surfline Live pipe going here. Uh, Mark is going to continue to provide replays and uh, see some more great waves like this for at least the next little while. Uh, but you don't, you guys don't need to, to listen to us talk anymore. Uh, just enjoy the surf. Uh, we appreciate you tuning in. Uh, please do, if, if you've enjoyed this broadcast, please uh, hit that like and subscribe button on YouTube. Uh, we'd, we'd appreciate it. We want to do more of this type of thing with some of our, our live camps, uh, whether on the North Shore of Oahu here at Pipeline, uh, or potentially some other areas around the world. So uh, appreciate you logging on, listening to us, hanging out with us for a little while, listening to us babble about uh, some dorky forecast things, but it's, it's great to talk. John, it was uh, a pleasure spending my late morning and early afternoon with you. Uh, you're on the East Coast, Absolutely. so it uh, might be time for a, a cocktail or a, a non-alcoholic beverage, whatever your choice is. And I, uh, I'll, I, I'll sign I, this here. I actually have to do the forecast. I actually have to do the forecast, oh, Kevin. Oh, yeah. uh, I, am, I, am, I, am, I am not off. I, I have to forecast for Hawaii. But hey, right. I just want to say there's actually two, two big spots that i really really want that i that i forgot to touch on now is crazy i know, I know, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna call them out already it's cortez bank and nazare no yeah the three then nazare <laughs> but the but i was gonna say blacks blacks and oh, yeah, gonna... san diego is, is special bathymetry going on there mavericks uh nazare uh i mean arguably the most crazy bathymetry of every spot on the planet is Nazare. It's just, I mean, what, what place can amplify a swell that much and produce what is, you know, arguably the biggest waves on the planet that you can surf. Um, but anyways, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you, Kevin, for, uh, um, for all the awesome questions, uh, to let me ramble on and thanks for listening to me. Um, and, uh, it's like, it, I mean, like it's been a treat to be on here. Uh, I hope I hope you continue to do this more, and I hope uh, our audience out there is pumped on this and uh, and wants to see more of it too. So yeah, aloha, thank you. Uh, yeah, thanks everyone. Enjoy the show. Um, surf's pumping. I'll hopefully, you get a couple more waves and and great replays from Mark and and our crew here. Thanks to Mark. Thanks to Jeff Hall for putting this together. Uh, we're stoked to do it. And until next time, we'll see ya. Aloha.
What's the site counter at this morning? Oh, we're, we're, um, we're over psyched right now. <laughs> we're in overtime mode. Trying to figure this out. Excuse me, not out there. Good luck, Jamie. Thank you.